Hi everyone! Welcome again to Handy Dandy Husband. Today we have a how-to video for you that might get you some extra life out of your old beer trimmer. I purchased this premier brand beard and mustache trimmer approximately 13 years ago. It is model number LD830. Likely a brand labeled by London Drugs, the place I purchased it from, for about $20. Now, I know, the cost is little, and in reality, I have really obtained my money's worth over the many years I've had the product. However, I feel that I should at least try, for Mother Nature's sake, to prolong this beer trimmer's life if I can with little or no cost. Join me while we investigate together and see if we can't get another few years out of this product and save it from the trash heap. Let's begin. Now, to begin, I have assembled these items that I think I might need, but they may or may not be enough for the repair at hand. Just to give you an overview, this is the beer trimmer and it's fully charged, but it's got this funny issue and that's this. When I turn it on, it makes that horrid noise and then it stops working until I press it a certain way let me just focus in on that a little better so my thinking is that it's probably a contact issue perhaps a lubrication issue but whatever the case uh, I'm gonna try to investigate and see if I can remedy number one the noise and number two the intermittent failures. So in line with that, what I have assembled is the following. Just a rag, a catch-all bin to catch any dirt or grime that might come out of the beer trimmer, a few q-tips to apply any isopropyl alcohol or contact cleaner. I have a brush just to clean the debris from the insides of the beer trimmer, a Phillips head screwdriver and I have used this in my other videos and it's extendable but I won't need the extension capability today, a flashlight just in case I need to spotlight any activity, and GB aux guard which is um, copper based and I find it's a really good antioxidant some silico paste for lubrication if necessary. What I'll do is I'll make sure that there is a uh, link in the description below of all these items and how you can purchase them from Amazon. Okay, so let's begin with the disassembly and we'll take it from there. We'll be beginning with the disassembly of the beer trimmer. And as you can tell here, let's bring my light a little bit closer, shine it where I need it to be, okay, and as you can tell, there's three screws, two for the top portion and one for the battery compartment, and I'll undo the battery compartment first, so I can disconnect the power. like there's moisture within, but not significant amount. Looks like the contacts are not that corroded, so the problem must lie higher up with the, with the switch itself. Okay, so as you can tell, there was a little bit of moisture on the battery, but it seems 
that's all okay. Let's see if I can disassemble it. I guess I can. Everything is soldered together. And just for everyone's information, this portion here is what the recharging port uh, goes into so that that's what charges up the, uh, the unit. Okay, so let's take off the remainder. I can see here some of the gasket has uh, worn off over the years. Be gentle with the screws when you're removing them. You can hear that plastic break there. Or rather, the screw break from the plastic. These screws are thinner than the screw holding the battery compartment in place. Looks like there's some sort of... attachment that I'm not able to get to that's holding the, the piece on. Okay, just a little bit of a tug. It should. There we go. It was just friction fit with this portion here onto the end near the uh, movement mechanism here. This seems to be moving freely. There's no issues with this one. Let's see if I can turn it on. is not coming from the blade but rather from this area here. Okay. Oops, there is some moisture here. So at one point moisture has gotten in. This area seems to be fine. I, I will put some oil on here, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. The noise is coming from here. I don't know if that's something that can be easily repaired. Okay, looks like we uncovered some issues here. First, let's give it a bit of a clean. Oops. So, contact. And if it's, as you can see here, Contacts are dirty. Contacts dirty. And this area here, the contact is actually flaked off. Now, what I'm gonna try to do is clean this area off and see if I can attach uh, some solder, just drip some solder on this area, on this area here, into this groove, and see if I can extend this uh, contact surface. And I'll clean the contacts here. That should make sure that the unit works more um, consistently 
but of course the problem is always going to be um, once it starts working this this noise I can even reproduce it I wonder if I was to add some oil just to the shaft if that would that would help that's what I'm going to try to do but let's first clean all the contacts and then add the um, solder to see if it will stick and then from there add the oil that's the game plan okay I've uh, tinned my soldering iron and it's all ready to go I'm just gonna put a bit of a dab of of soldering onto this here there we go this is going to improve the contact there there we go so now the area that was worn out or the area that wasn't providing as much of a surface for the uh, contact uh, that or the switch that I was pressing um, that will now be filled in and it was fairly easy to do. Just wanna make sure this is all good. Yep. Now with regard to the noise, there we go. I'm gonna try a little bit of clipping, clipper's oil and see if that helps. It just seems very dry. But... Wow, that really did help. This is just Wall's clipper oil. And I use this with my larger clipper. I can't reproduce the noise anymore. Maybe that's all it doesn't need it. A little bit of cleaning and a little bit of grease. Or oil. Now, with regard to this contact here, once again, I'm going to clean it with a super contact cleaner now that it's cooled down. And this will have the benefit of not only protecting the contact, but also lubricating it. Put some on the switch as well. Make sure you guys can see that. So now I'm just going to reassemble it. And this is the way it goes with the contacts down. Make sure that the wires are away from the various um, areas that are going to come down and press down to, to enclose the other half. Wow, a lot less noise. And it's not uh, stopping when it comes at a particular angle or goes on a particular angle. I'm just gonna add another drop of clipper's oil to the end there for good measure. Turn it on so that it mixes in. Excellent. Looks like it's going to work fine. 
Now, on this end here, I'm just going to add a little bit of silicone paste, and that's just going to help help with the lubrication. Now I find that silicone paste is is quite decent for preventing rust, so I'll put some in there as well where the spring appears to be rusted out. It looks like one of the springs here broke on the other side, so there's not much life left in this uh, trimmer, but we have given it a, a few more years at least, hopefully. So now I'm going to reassemble it. And you can see here, right there, that that clip is what was previously um, holding the, um, the this other portion on, and you just gotta snap it in in place. Now there's a little bit of rust on this screw, so I'm just going to add some of the remainder silicone paste that I have onto it. I'll just prevent it from rusting any further. Uh, I've just found that the silicone paste seems to be a really good uh, protectant and can uh, resist rust and forms a protective barrier on the metal uh, that doesn't wash off, very, wash off very easily. Okay, I'm just going to put the battery compartment lid back on. Now I don't have much a seal here so I'll have to remember that. Just want to make sure that the that's great. Okay. Just want to make sure that the, the charging port is placed securely in position. I'm very happy that the noise is is gone. That might reappear. Wow. It works fine. If I put pressure on it, that doesn't affect its movement. Position doesn't affect its movement. And it's not noisy anymore. Oh. This has been a successful repair. I hope you liked this video and that it helped give you the encouragement to investigate or repair a similar device or small appliance in your home as well. This is going to save you money and also protect our natural resources. As always, I appreciate your comments and likes and thanks for watching. See you next time at Handy Dandy Husband.